So, in a nutshell, who's Puel? We're actually an all-flash array. We don't have any disk at all. Um, we were built all-flash from the ground up. Um, we offer very, very high performance at a very, very consistent or flash-like latency. Um, so that's us wrapped up in a, in, a, in a very, very quick second. I know I haven't got a lot of time, so I thought I'd start on the first slide in and just talk about when I, when I started here, I started just before V Forum, and I, and I sat down, I sat through my deck, and I went okay, um, through my training for the first week and got out there, and, and V Forum was the next week, and I had my pitch down pat. What I discovered was a lot of what I was saying, a lot of the other newest, newer companies were actually saying the same things, and it's funny when I sit here tonight, I, I do hear a lot of the same things coming, up, coming around. And if you look at the problem with storage was, number one, it was performance, and it was very, very complex, right? So where the new world is going is simplicity. Now, if you haven't been up the back, um, this is our storage manual, right? This is it here. Um, I had a recent example of where I put some equipment in, it took me an hour to actually put it in, 45 minute drive back from the data center to the customer's uh, um, office. So, and before I left, I said, can you see, can you see the management console? Yes. By the time I got back, they were actually provisioning out VMs. It was that fast. I didn't have to show them anything that actually worked out how to do it. So we've got that simplicity, we've got that uh, rapid deployment. Yes, we are VMware aware, and we do make it easy. You don't need to worry about rate groups, you don't need to worry about performance, you don't need to worry about uh, all that design work underneath, and we, we have all the clones. Um, we're built on, on commodity servers, no one actually raised that, but um, look, um, there is a commodity curve. Um, there's no use building fancy storage arrays these days because servers are, are doubling each year. Um, currently, we're on um, Ivy Bridge, and obviously you'll see us move to Sandy Bridge and get more performance like that. We do start small and we grow large. Some people think we're big. Um, we do actually come in, in, in very, very small sizes. And as I think if somebody else mentioned, we're great for VDI. So we do, do very, very good VDI. Um, and once again, we can start off very, very small and get very, very large implementations um, and have very, very cost-effective dollar per desktop, which is, which is obviously the key part of, of, of driving in, in, in your VDI environment. So, what I thought I'd talk about is a couple of, well, probably three really cool things that I think that we have that, that um, a lot of other people don't have. Um, the first one is our controllers are stateless. Now, what I mean by that is our NVRAM or our cache, disk cache, as you probably know it as, actually sits on the drive trace. So the controllers themselves have no information on them at all. Now, there's two key parts that, 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 that uh, that's important for, is how fast um, can I actually swap a component out? I could go and get another controller off the shelf and put it in and replace um, any controller and then connect it back up and it will actually become part of the cluster. But where we see this is really, really important. This is a real tweet. If, uh, if you want to go to, it's at Abbott Mountain. Um, I'm not very good at Twitter, sorry. But, um, but take a look. This guy is one of our customers and he tweets a lot about, about, uh, about our product. Um, this is him stepping through a controller, a non-disruptive controller or new model controller upgrade. So imagine if you could go, I um, mean, uh, I'll use, uh, no, there's no, no, no one from NetApps in the room, so I was going from my old 2000 to my 3000, um, and I could do that non-disruptively. Um, so you can actually do that with our technology, and you can see here, that's our previous 300 model, and he's got our 400 model, and they're coexisting together in the same cluster and moving that up. So what that means for you is no more data migrations. Everything's done in place. So in three years' time, normally when you go through three to five years' time when you're about to replace your controllers, you don't have to migrate off them. We actually just replace the heads. Um, we actually have a, a, a maintenance program that allows you to actually do that. Um, at, uh, as, as part of maintenance, we, we don't charge for the controllers, it's included in your maintenance agreement, which is called Forever Flash. The other part is that this is, um, and I think it was you guys spoke about resiliency, and uh, yes, it is absolutely important. Um, and it's also very, very important that you maintain performance through that resiliency. This is a photo I took, um, and this is something I, I tend to do with every single customer as part of their acceptance testing. Um, this was actually running Iometer, which is not my favourite tool, but it's great for when you want to um, load up some, some, some I.O. testing. It was running about 120,000 IPs, so it, was, it was an 80% right workload. You can see here, we've actually pulled an NVRAM. Uh, we pulled two drives, their selection. I'll let them choose whatever two drives they want. Once it's self-healed, and that's the way a rate works, 
No performance drop at all. We then pulled another two. At the same time, we then pulled a controller. So that controller was actually off. He wanted to get this to a single point of failure. Every single point um, that, that every piece of redundancy he wanted pulled, and he wanted to ensure that the performance stayed the same. Now through this entire test, there's six SSD drives pulled there. In fact, that's more SSD drives than we've actually lost across our entire fleet, which is over a thousand now. Um, we pulled them one, and, and this did not miss a beat. So the other part is some people say it was 99.999% available. Now, I'm sure many of you have had modular controllers and they've had a controller failover and suddenly performance is not quite the same because um, it was going so high. Um, so I've certainly had it in my time. Um, we do not allow it to go above one controller in performance. Right? So you've always got enough performance there to ensure that it, it, it will survive a failure. The other part of that is we can do non-disruptive software upgrades. You saw we can non-disruptive non hardware upgrades and we can do that with confidence um, through it all. So performance is very, very important through failure. You don't want your customers to know that something's gone wrong in the back um, as we quickly swap that out. Of course, we can do that in four hours. Inline data reduction. Um, it's a very, very key part of our technology to actually drive the price down. We can do data reduction, ensure that performance, and drive the cost of flash down, because flash is a very, very expensive medium. Right? So you want to be able to store you know, as, as much data on each particular cell you have. So I thought I'd step through how our, our data inline data reduction works. So there's five different technologies we actually use through it. Um, I don't know why this one adds up to five. Um, first off, whenever we write to disk, all our writes go in VRAM. Um, that, that are written to two in VRAM cards. Um, at that particular point in time, the host actually is acknowledged. That's how we ensure consistent latency through this entire um, scenario. Um, thin provisioning, of course, is always there. It's always on. So um, um, if you take the zeros away, you're always going to get that space um, back. So the other part of that is um, we'll then go off and look and identify um, what blocks are actually duplicate. So we'll find duplicate blocks, and before we actually write them to disk, we'll discard them at that particular point in time. Anything that's actually left and we've identified as, um, as a unique block, um, we'll then compress it as well. So the great thing about this is some people talk about one technology, some people talk about both. Compression picks up database, DJ picks up VMware. Once we compress it, we then write it out. Now, Flash writes differently to disk. So a lot of the, the traditional vendors will say, hey, I'll put some Flash in, it's going to be really, really fast, and it'll speed things up. That's incorrect. Right? You need to write out to Flash a certain special way. And uh, we've designed it so we can write out to Flash very, very quickly, and we can ensure the longevity of that particular Flash that we actually have there. And we actually keep the right amplification, if anybody's ever heard that term. You probably hear it a lot in the, in the Flash world. We actually get below one in our right amplification due to, due to a lot of this. And we actually see performance increases because of our uh, data reduction cap capabilities as well. I mean, I knew I only had a little bit of time, so I thought I'd really, really touch on some of these other cool features we have. Yeah, we've got native data at risk encryption, which some people like. So if you actually try and pull some drives out and plug them in somewhere else, you can't see the data. Um, we're in all flash only, and it's really, really important we want inconsistent um, latency across there. We will support future flash technology. It has a flash personality layer. Flash is evolving, flash is changing, um, it's going at a million miles an hour. What you buy now, um, we've ensured you it will support the future flash technologies as you go along. Um, our replication, um, I think it's really, really good what we've actually done. We just announced it. Um, it's gonna have, it has DG compression and uh, encryption in built into it as well, so you can actually get rid of those riverbed boxes. It's all IP based as well. Um, I know everyone here is, is, is in the, in, uh, working in VMware and, and, uh, and it's, it's obviously one of the key parts of, of, of what you do. Um, we are more than just a VMware box, right? Um, and this one of the differences we have is that uh, a lot of people use us for database and database acceleration. When I go in and talk to customers and you go, used to be, do you have a backup problem? Now I want to go in and, and, and I say, do you have a database problem? Yes, just about everyone has a database problem because database is driving considerable I.O. and considerable throughput. So this is just an example of, of where pure storage actually um, helped the customer who was producing a report every two weeks. They can now produce it nightly. 
So for the business, that was huge. So if you are seeing database performance issues, if you do want to accelerate the amount of information you actually use, um, this, is a, this is a very, very good product for that. Yes, two minutes? Okay, I'll go very, very fast. The other area is, is reducing DB licensing. So in this particular scenario, this is a physical site. I'm sure most of you had your DB saying, DBA saying that I can't virtualize my application because it's, it needs too much performance. So with pure storage, you can actually do that and get better performance. So in this particular scenario, this customer cut their licensing down a lot, sought some data reduction, and also saw performance increase. So don't tell them. Just move it across. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. And it has been done, believe it or not. Um, that's probably the only way to convince them sometimes. So not only do we have a very, very good technology, but there's also a lot of innovative purchasing. Um, we we believe strongly in our product, so we have a lovely storage guarantee. Okay, when you buy the product for the first 30 days, you can test it out for any reason. There's no, I can tell you the conditions are there is no conditions. You can return the unit if you just don't like it. You don't have to tell us why. You can actually return the unit. Um, software licensing. There is no software licensing model. I had a, a customer I was with them this morning. And they said, "Can you show me the SKU?" I said, "The SKU is one line." because we don't actually have software. Any future releases of software we actually have, you get that included as part of that particular model. Um, simplicity we got there. Um, our Cloud Assist, we actually do analytics on the boxes. We keep 12 months on site. We also send it off to our remote support. So in the event of an issue, instead of ringing up and saying, hey, do I actually have my logs? Um, can you actually send some logs up or can you run an application? To actually see what performance is, we have them there now. So time to resolution has improved um, considerably by, by offering that. And Forever Flash is, is, is about reducing the price of maintenance, driving that price down. Um, we'll, at the end of three years, we'll put, include new controls for years four and five at no cost. Or the other option is if you actually upgrade midway through, we'll reset your maintenance back at that particular point in time. Well, that's it for me. I knew I had a very, very short time. Look, there's, there's a lot more I could talk about about us. Um, I'd love to come and see you sometime, but if you are having performance issues in your VMware environment or um, you want to simplify it, absolutely come, come and talk to you. No worries.